I'm Amanda Knox, and I'm here in LA to meet Amber Rose. We're two women who have both been rendered two-dimensional by the tabloids. Her past relationships have just been fodder for this endless cycle of sexist abuse by the media. Her past work, both stripping in clubs and dancing in music videos, has opened Amber up to malicious scrutiny. I'm really inspired by how Amber is able to hold her head high despite everything that's putting her down. In my case, the Italian police justified arresting me for murder by portraying me as sexually promiscuous to devalue and discredit me. Now, I'm here to learn Amber's story. I love this one. I think this one is awesome. Oh, amazing. Thanks for having me. Of course. This is your home. Thanks for having me. I'm what? so excited to do this. I was looking into the issue of people shaming and vilifying women through their sexuality. Right. And like you clearly came up. You totally own the fact that I was a stripper. Mm -hmm. And like the idea that you could be empowered while in that position just like blows people's minds. The yeah, well they, they expect me to be like, I was a stripper and I had a hard life and I was the best time of my life. I wish I had a pole in the middle of my living room. Going out on stage, getting that initial reaction, getting the money thrown on me, being in my early 20s, having a bunch of friends. I also say that it was a form of business school for me. Mm. It gave me the gift of gab. It taught me how to get money. So don't be mad at me. Right. Because, you know, I was young and beautiful and I made, you know, $150,000, $200,000 in cash a year. Pfft, what? Come on, man. <laughs> You're just a hater at that point. After making a name for herself, Amber started getting flown to LA to dance in rap videos. That's how she met Kanye West. They began dating in 2009 and were spotted everywhere together. But when they split after two years, Kanye started trashing her in the press. Mm. I'd take 30 showers before I got with Kim, you know? <laughs> it's very hard for a woman to want to be with someone that's with Amber Rose. In 2016, after a whirlwind romance, Amber and rapper Wiz Khalifa got married, had a son, and eventually split. Afterward, he slut-shamed her in his music. When did you first realize in your life that there was some kind of disparity between what men and women were experiencing in regards to their sexuality? For me, after every breakup, it was like really bad on me. Mm. Even if I got cheated on, it was always my fault. After my divorce, my ex-husband was like out, like making out with girls and like living his life and partying as he should. And I would go on like a dinner date. And it was like, I was just a disgusting whore, yeah. And then there would be like, here's all the men that Amber Rose slept with. And then it'd be like, so-and-so, number 38. And then it's like, no, I never slept with this person. Don't know this guy, don't know this guy. Or yes, I did him. My Documented, even though it's half of it is not true. Documented. Documented. Yeah. What is it that the media gets wrong about you? I don't care. <laughs> no, I really don't. Okay, okay. No, I really don't. You, me, everybody else here, we can say who we are until we're blue in the face. I feel like I'm a little bit similar to you where it's like, you know what? If no one's trying to like hunt me down and put me in a prison cell, like I could give less of a <laughs> you know? You know, your story helped a lot of women. I hope you, that you know that. Just the slut shaming that you had to endure during a difficult time at the, at the same time. I mean, that must have been like extremely, extremely hard. Well, it's like people are just taking you away from you, <clears throat> right? Like that's what they're doing. And it's hard to ignore when you're in a prison cell, you know? Or it's yeah. hard to ignore when like your entire social group at in school like has all decided that you're this type of person and you're like, am I just f***ing crazy? Right. Or, is the, or is the world right? I know that you, because I read your book, that you said that you also had slut-shamed people before. You know, society, um, 
made me look at certain girls if she was dressed a certain way, I'd be like, ugh, she is just, she just wants so much attention. Like, she's such a whore. Or I liked a boy and the boy liked somebody else. Mm -hmm. And, and I'd be like, like, oh, they must be putting out or something. Yeah, like, oh like, God, she f everybody. And it's just like, really, I really just want to f them, yeah, you know? Yeah. So, like, I was just mad, <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's really all it was. And I got to a point, like, as I got older, when I was like, you know what? I'm not gonna let those derogatory labels hurt me anymore. I'm just gonna embrace them. A story caught Amber's eye from back in 2011, when a Toronto police officer suggested to a group of college women that they shouldn't dress like sluts if they didn't want to be sexually assaulted. Thousands of women took to the streets in protest. I saw some pictures. It was a girl that had on pasties, and it was like still not asking for it, and she had it like written on her body. And I was like, what the f is this? I need to be a part of it. Like, what is this? This is true. <laughs> yeah, I was like, this is life. Like, I need this in my life. And so I put on Twitter, I'm having a slut walk this year. So I don't know what you guys are doing, but that's what I'm doing. It like literally like started trending like like worldwide just from a tweet. And they're like, a slut walk? What the f is, a slut, is walk? a slut walk? You're trying to make an excuse because you're a slut. We're tired of the victim blaming, we're tired of the rape, and we're going to do something about it. Right. Why not call these empowerment walks and avoid the controversy and, the, you know, the, the... Do you think I'd be sitting here if they were called empowerment walks? In the first year, it was about 2,500 people. Amber! And then the second year was 11,000 people. Whoa. Because I didn't shut up about it. <laughs> and then the third year, 18,000 people showed up. Well, this year at my slow walk, I was Captain Save-A-Ho. <laughs> that was like my superhero <laughs> costume because I was, I was saving hoes all around the world. To be told that I was nothing but a stripper, um, it hurt. So I decided... <laughs> I decided to have this slut walk for women that have been through Has anyone in the slut walk come up to you and said, you saved me? Yeah. I'm just happy that I have some type of platform for, you know, women to come and even, you know, there was a girl this year, she had a gray sweatsuit on and she had a sign that said, I was raped in this. I told all the women, I was like, I will take all the punches for you guys. And, I, and I'll do it again and I'll do it a million times over. That taking punches for other women thing mm -hmm. is really, that's such a strong statement. I use that as a tool to help other women. Mm. And anytime you ever feel like um, you're just having a moment, when we're done this, I'm gonna give you my number and you can literally call me. I'm on the phone all day. Thank you so much. So I have a little gift for you. What? And then of course you are a certified slut, just like me. Yes. So. <laughs> so appropriate. <laughs> it's beautiful. Since Italy, celebrity has felt like a bad word. Being known has come with a ton of scrutiny and hatred. Like Amber Rose and I have in common the idea that if sex is a part of your identity, that it is somehow corrupted you. Let's all come together and be positive role models for each other. We're still at a point where it's too easy to look at a woman, call her a slut, and then end the discussion. Really, she deeply, viscerally understands that women are way more than we give them credit for.